Welcome back to the Think Media Podcast. Sean Cannell here, and I'm fired up because we're in a four-part series about the perfect video recipe. Now, this recipe has been formulated over 12 plus years that I've been on YouTube, over 2,000 videos I've posted, over 200 interviews with entrepreneurs and content creators using YouTube, um, and over 10,000 students now that have been successfully growing their channels, getting views, and then studying some of the most viral videos. And we've distilled down this recipe into four ingredients. It's the big idea, it's the hook, it's the content, and it's the transition. And in each of these Think Media podcast episodes, we're covering one of these ingredients. Ingredient number one was the big idea. And for more on that and why it's so important and why these ingredients go in order, I definitely recommend checking that out. If you listen to the podcast on audio, you can check that out in the archives or, of course, on the YouTube channel, the Think Media Podcast YouTube channel. But the second ingredient is the hook. After you're clear and you have a strong channel topic, you have a great thumbnail and a great title and someone gets into your video, you want to grab the viewer's attention in the first 30 seconds. And your goal is to do this, why 30 seconds? Now ultimately your goal is to keep people watching as long as possible. But it doesn't matter about how cool your video is five minutes into it if they're not watching through the first 30 seconds. And one of the things you'll notice in your YouTube analytics in your YouTube studio is a new tab underneath, there's overview, there's reach, and then there's engagement. And if you click on that in your YouTube analytics, you're actually gonna see a section that says key moments for audience retention. And there's a dedicated area that says still watching at 30 seconds. So we actually know that the YouTube studio, and therefore it's an insight into the YouTube algorithm, really cares if you can hold a people's attention even for just the first 30 seconds of your video. My lowest performing videos on Think Media are around 48%. It means that by 30 seconds, two out of four people have stopped watching. And typically some of our highest is about 75%. So we're retaining three out of four people are still watching at the end of 30 seconds. So what's the point of the hook? The goal is to craft an opening to your video that is intentional and that is compelling and that does a few things that really um, keeps people watching and makes them wanna watch until the end. And we call this the hook. And so I actually wanna break down for you in this episode uh, five simple ways that you can get more views and ultimately keep people watching your video through the first 30 seconds, and then even until the end of your video. Number one, open with a qualifying question. One of the easiest ways to create a stronger hook than average in your YouTube videos is to actually start with a question. The reason this is powerful is because it lets the viewer know they're in the right place, and it actually kind of opens up, it triggers the person's brain to agree with or to think about the questions. Like for example, it might say, have you ever been frustrated when you're trying to do DIY projects around the home and you can't get paint to stick to the furniture that you're trying to you know, turn into shabby chic or whatever? Niche example, but you know, have you, are you trying to figure out how to get more views on your YouTube channel? Are you curious about whether you should do an FHA loan or a conventional loan on the home that you're gonna buy? It lets the viewer know, they go, yes, this is exactly what I wanna know. I'm exactly in the right place. I am curious. This is exactly what I'm interested in. See, the mistake people make is they they open with some random information. They open with some a drawn out, weird opening of, of just some random B-roll or some music or your logo. Forget all of that. Get right into it and open with a powerful qualifying question. Secondly, cut to the chase. One of the best ways to keep viewer retention high during the first 30 seconds and to ultimately trigger the algorithm, because when you do keep viewer retention high, you will get more views, is to cut to the chase. Now, maybe you've heard this phrase before, but you're unsure of where it comes from. And this phrase, cut to the chase, is actually used in filmmaking. Now, I've grown up uh, with the film 
uh, series. It's like a whole legacy now, right? Uh, the James Bond series. And let me know, you know, who's your favorite James Bond? Is it Pierce Brosnan? You know, is it Sean Connery? Let me know. Uh, I grew up with like Sean Connery, you only live twice. But one of the things you'll notice is when you're um, watching like a James Bond movie is that the opening of the movie, like the very beginning is like a chase scene. Like many of the James Bond movies, they start with like, boom, screeching tires. And you see, uh, you know, a, a Rolls Royce that's like following a Porsche. And, and you see someone out the window, do, 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 do. There's, there's like, a, they're being shot at. And, you know, James is like just very cavalier. He's very calm in the midst of gunfire. Some female is sitting next to him, you know, and he's, you're going down some roads in a European town, you know, like barrels of water being knocked over. People are jumping out of the way. And it's pretty exciting. Like, you don't know the backstory. You're not sure how we got into this predicament. You're not sure exactly what's happening. You're just, you're right into the action. This is why we say cut to the chase. Like, get me, get to the action. Like, get to the big, get to the main thing. And what will interestingly enough happen is you've seen this in a lot of movies. And they'll do this in TV shows. They'll do this in movies. There's the chase scene. And then it'll cut to, you know, 24 hours earlier. Because, and you're fascinated now. You're like, that was intense. It was a great way to start. It got you hooked on the movie, the film. And then it's like 24 hours earlier, and now it's a little slower paced. Now we're doing some character development. Now we're getting into the backstory. Now we have some dialogue, you know, a little bit of, uh, a little bit of atmosphere shots, some landscape shots, things are happening. But, but the opening is the chase. This thinking is a great way for you to power up your hooks when it comes to your YouTube videos. Just get to the point, trim the fluff, start with some action. For vlog content creators, this is a lot of times where you'll make a promise in your title and your thumbnail, and maybe the promise is like crazy diving board, uh, you know, crazy water slide um, that you went to with your kids. And then the opening of the video actually shows, ah, oh, your kids are going down the water slide. That thing is so big. And then it cuts to the beginning of the day. It's the same idea. You cut to the chase. You actually kind of give the payoff to a degree right up front. And maybe it's not the entire payoff. Maybe it's you know all the way up to the beginning where it's a chase scene, Mission Impossible, Tom Cruise. And, and, he's, and, and the chase is happening and all of a sudden, boom, he drives off a cliff. And then it cuts an hour earlier. You're like, what happened? Does he crash? Does he not live? And then it builds up to that moment. That's the way the movie Uncharted started. In the beginning, he's coming out of the back of a plane and he's like, you know, he's hanging on to these uh, like crazy cargo and, and all he's being shot at. And then all of a sudden he breaks loose and he's falling through the sky. Is he gonna make it? What, did, what just happened there? Not only did, did it start with action, but it also makes you wanna watch until the end. Now you might say, Sean, this is ridiculous. This is not the level of production value that my videos are gonna have. They're not as interesting as you're describing. My friend, I'm just asking you to think about how you can get right into the action. And the big idea here is spend time crafting your hook. Like it's that important. Because all the energy you're gonna put into the rest of the content is not even gonna matter if you can't keep people watching during the first 30 seconds. So number one, open with a qualifying question. Number two, cut to the chase. Number three, give the viewer a reason to watch until the end. The, let me break down how you could do this in practice. You might cut to the chase by delivering a stat. And you might say, well, the stat, you know, well, well, it's in. Uh, housing transactions are crashing. Um, and uh, prices are on the decline, and Redfin just revealed this, and Blackstone just revealed this, you're actually adding data right up front. And then you say, so you might be wondering, is now a good time to buy a house or not? There's your qualifying question. And so you go, in this video, I'm actually gonna be breaking down some new data. You delivered some data, but you're gonna break down some new stuff. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my three-step framework for how I can decide if any real estate deal is a good deal or not. See how powerful that is? That ultimately you can deliver some value right up front, cut to the chase. You can still ask a qualifying question or, or tee up some questions you're gonna answer to pique the viewer's interest and curiosity. And then three, you can ultimately then give them a reason to watch to the end in the most practical way. It either could be inferred, meaning, they should watch to the end because what you're promising is so interesting, or you literally could state it and say, 
And actually watch this video until the end because this is what I will deliver to you then. There's something that they ultimately will get. There's a payoff that you're promising and this is all happening during the hook. Number four, open a loop and agitate the problem. This is similar to giving a reason to watch until the end, but your goal is to open a loop, and in some cases, this would be you not stating a reason to watch till the end. You simply open a loop. What do I mean? You know, the reason stories work, and the best YouTube videos have storytelling elements woven into them. Even if it's education, even if it seems like it's dry, if you're better at narrative and story and you improve your storytelling skills, you will have more success on YouTube. And storytelling is based on conflict. And without conflict, there's no drama. And drama is ultimately conflict. So what's the problem or the challenge the character is trying to overcome? So again, the conflict might be there's so much drama in the housing market. Here's the data that reveals that. And you pile on that negative data, for example, that's agitating the problem. And you open up a loop. So is it absolutely insane to buy a house right now? Or actually, could it be strategic? Simply, everything I just did there is its own loop, and the problem is agitated. So the question you have to ask is, okay, how can I potentially uh, create some unresolved conflict? Now, have you ever watched a movie and been frustrated because it opened loops that it never closed? Have you ever actually watched a movie that wasn't even that good, but you're just a commitment person like me? right? We have that in common. You're like, I'm just trying to watch to the end because I'm trying to get answers to my questions. I have too many questions and I need to get answers. And then you're super frustrated because the movie ends and you're like, that was horrible. Like they didn't even answer. There's too many unresolved plot lines. Like what the heck? But why'd you watch till the end? Open loops and unresolved conflict. And so these are, this is kind of an advanced way of thinking about how you could power up your hook. How could I ultimately create some unresolved conflict? How can I create drama in the opening? And this isn't. This might sound like extreme, but friend, this is important. And and of course, you want to do this ethically. It's not like you're creating just drama for drama's sake, or you're not trying to do. You, you know, you're not forcing weird clickbait, or you're trying to exaggerate. But good storytelling. What I've learned is that some people can tell a story. Of, of what just happened to them at the grocery store. Do you know anyone like this? And they're like, yeah, I mean, it was, it was kind of frustrating. Um, you know, I, they charged me for something they shouldn't have charged me for. And, uh, and they wouldn't give my money back. And I was holding up the line, but whatever, you know, it's all good. And you talk to somebody else, they can turn any mundane life, you know, scenario into an entertaining narrative of intense drama. That's something to think about when you're powering up your YouTube videos. You're like, you wouldn't believe it. I was at the grocery store line. The eyes of the people behind me, I could feel them burning into my soul. But when I watched the guy charge me for the six pack of LaCroix soda water that I didn't even buy, I started to bring it up. But then, you know what I mean? And so like the, to the degree that you create conflict and drama, it could keep people watching longer. And not just walk, watching for the 30 seconds, but your ultimate goal is to keep people until the end of the video. And then finally, number five, show and tell. The best hooks on YouTube, the best openings on YouTube, the best 30 seconds on YouTube, they don't just tell, what do I mean? They're not just a talking head video, but they show. How do you show? Show could be B-roll. Now in video editing, B-roll, is where there's extra clips illustrating what you're talking about. A role is you usually talking. So if you happen to be on our YouTube version of this podcast, then you can visually see me right now. And I'm talking and this is A role. Now B role would be if we laid on top of this clip examples of things that I was saying. And it could be kind of illustrative, whereas if it just was somewhat related, if I was talking about the financial system, and I was talking about uh, the economy and money. It could be like just random stock footage about the economy and money. Or if I was talking about something specific, if I was like, you know, my wife and I just started an Airbnb and we just updated the backyard and, and it's, you know, we added some uh, concrete and some pavers and we added a nice little umbrella and some yard furniture. And then instead of me just describing that to you verbally, and that's the A roll on camera, me talking, the B roll is the clips that are laid on top of that. And so to the degree that you also 
can switch up the scene and show visual illustrations of what you're saying, that will help your audience retention and that will help people watch for the first 30 seconds. What I want to encourage you is that that remains true for your entire video. But even if you don't do it for your entire video, because it takes energy, it takes time, it takes editing, it's worth doing in the hook. Nothing more important than spending time on the hook. Because again, no one's gonna watch the rest of the video unless you, if you, unless you sell them on watching the video in the beginning. You are trying to persuade and convince and add reasons that a person should watch until the end, either overtly or more subtly, simply by saying, this is what's coming up, this is why it's gonna be cool, this is also one of the open loops we're gonna solve, here's a reason that you should watch until the end, and the person goes, yeah, I'm committed to this video, I wanna watch this thing. So the big idea here is you need to craft your hook. You can be a little bit more lax, it's best if you're detailed in all of the ingredients of the perfect video recipe, but if your content is a little bit more relaxed, like it's maybe just outlined but it's not scripted, I think there's a time and place that you should actually script your hook even word for word, because every word matters. It's 30 seconds, it's all you got, and you're trying to keep as many people watching during that entire time. So let's recap. The perfect video recipe, the big idea, the hook, and in part three and four, we're gonna be talking about the content and then the transition. The perfect video recipe, just like a recipe in your kitchen, right? Just like a recipe that you download online or you get on Pinterest, is ingredients that are critical to having a successful YouTube video and ultimately a viral video. If you have an amazing topic with a great title and thumbnail, and then you have just a killer 30 seconds that grips the majority of viewers that click on the video, whether they're a subscriber to you or they're just meeting you, and you hold their attention for the first 30 seconds. You know, recently at um, our event, Grow With Video Live, Evan Carmichael discovered a stat that actually your goal is to have 70% of people watching at one minute, and you can study that in your analytics. And he did a whole session on advanced YouTube strategies, and um, that's actually available. The, those recordings are available at videosuccesssecrets.com, and we package those. There's a cool action guide and some other things. But that particular metric was one of the things him and his team, they study a lot of data. If you can actually get people, at least seven out of 10 people still watching your video, at 60 seconds, he's discovered that that actually makes that the lifespan of that video, the views of that video, and how much that video is suggested by the YouTube algorithm exponentially higher. So YouTube's telling us this is how many people are watching at 30 seconds, even more challenging. Can you have seven out of 10 people still watching at 60 seconds? And is it okay for your, does your hook only have to be 30 seconds? No, it might be 10, but it could be 90. That's one thing we've learned. Have you ever watched like the opening of some of the new Marvel movies or whatever? There's a seven minute intro before the credits start. There's nine minutes of content and backstory and then the boom, the music starts, dun, 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 you know, and then the logo comes in, produced by whoever, written by, directed by. The hooks of a lot of content is being extended. It's cut right to the chase. It's get right into the content. It's give no backstory. It's not, it doesn't get into any of that stuff. It's right to the value. Let's keep people watching the opening of this thing. This perfect video recipe is real. It's a real strong big idea. Get people to click, title, thumbnail, topic. Then real strong opening. And that opening might be 10 seconds, but it might be 90. And Evan Carmichael taught us if, you're, if you could keep people, seven out of 10 people watching 60 seconds of your video and you hone in on continually improving your hooks to achieve that result, just watch what happens to one of your YouTube videos when you finally hit that target. So I hope you've been loving the perfect video recipe. I wanna encourage you, if you have not watched or listened to part one, go and check that out. It's all about the big idea. Today we covered the hook, and in part three, we're gonna be talking about tips for powering up your content, the third ingredient. Today's episode is brought to you by ytsecrets.com. The second edition of YouTube Secrets is out now. Over 80,000 copies sold of the first edition, but now it's updated with 90 new pages, new chapters, a new appendix, tons of new resources. The URL to get your hands on a copy of the physical book, ebook, or audiobook is ytsecrets.com. You can always check that out in the show notes. And my question of the day to you is how 
uh, are your hooks on a scale from one to 10. Um, on the podcast, there's not a, a way to really give us feedback on the audio version, uh, but it always means the world to us if you give us a review. And maybe this is the episode that we got to meet. Super awesome to meet you and would love your review on Apple Podcasts. But if you are watching the YouTube version of this, how's your hooks? Could, they, could, they, could you improve them? Are they a three out of 10? Or have you been really crushing that first 30 to 60 seconds? You're really crafting that, investing in that. Um, is it more of like an eight, nine, or 10 out of 10? I would love to hear you just kind of quickly rate your hooks. And I hope that this episode has served you. Smash like if you got value or rate and review the podcast wherever you're listening. And uh, maybe share this with somebody that wants to start or grow a YouTube channel this year. I think it'll be of value. I can't wait to connect with you, not just in the next episode, but in part three of the perfect video recipe. So we will talk soon.